um, using like major ad flat three, flat six, still, you know, pathetic losers uh, stuck on the first thing. And uh, so I came up with a progression that was like yeah. this kind of thing. like that but, but like tip it was just like a minor major seven a flat minor major seven f minor major seven a flat minor major seven e minor major seven c minor major seven and i was noticing that like you really gotta know what you're like i can't just take random shit from the scale like the progression you put underneath and where it like stops harmonic. I mean, when I say it out loud, it sounds very obvious. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like yeah. you can't just do shit and expect. Well, this is happen. like the um, like what I talk about a lot in the book is awareness of what you're playing over, right? And why yeah. the whole shape system, right, doesn't really produce the same result as what Alan's doing. You know? Yes there's so, still a there's still he still has the element of awareness and still has the element of landing on good tones and you know what i mean if you just yeah. randomly are landing you know i mean if your ear is good and you can use your ear and you're in tune with where your line is headed and where the chord progression is headed you know what i mean and you've got like an idea of what you want to land on or what chord you're going to land on then all the stuff you play over it as long as you resolve it, it's going to sound good, you know? Yeah, Hopefully. so I, like with that specific progression, like I was, I figured out that like all the notes of augmented work, kind of, like for ongoing lines and then like the notes in the scale, I could, if I'm playing fast, I could just touch them, that's fine. Yeah. But then resolving was really like C harmonic minor yeah yeah that's the kind of things you start to figure out too is like there's a certain scale that's kind of the um underlying theme of the, yeah. whatever the progression is and then the other notes are just kind of some outside stranger more interesting sounding abstract things you know all right well so like when you did uh like last night on that live stream you did giant steps kind of thing <laughs> So bad. <laughs> <laughs> with the augmented scale right it was so bad yeah like it's uh so again that comes back to like if you're just thinking about shapes that's just not going to work out really well <laughs> <No>. <laughs> so like there still has to be the element of awareness and all that that's the one thing i want to clear up too like when we were talking about countdown before uh -huh. Uh, in the book, I'm talking about the intro solo and I'm talking about all of, like the exotic scales he uses, but in the head solo where he's actually soloing over the changes, the changes. it's more um, major scales and it's more like eight note scales. There's a few messy on things here and there. Uh, but but it's, it's really inside the changes. He's not yeah, it's really that. he's inside the changes, but he's taking a more linear approach to it still. You know what I mean? Like the bigger picture. No, so like on the two five parts, right? Uh, where there's like a five going to a one, he'll just play like a major bebop scale straight through that or whatever. Yeah, like not really outlining. A yeah, he's not outlining the specific one. chord, each specific chord, like the way Coltrane did. He's not doing that, right? And he's it's, still playing sort of consonant sounds on both. Not consonant like sounds, as right. dissonant as yeah. like an augmented scale. Because when, when we were doing it yesterday, it, I wouldn't say, I mean, it's such a low stakes situation being home and doing it. That right. Like it's just hilarious, but it's like, it's just, that's where you want to work this stuff out at. <laughs> it's just so, it's just so funny to sound that bad. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know if everybody like, feels that way but like I have like this thing where like in my brain it's a great idea until the moment I'm like you know, <laughs> I just start playing it and it's just well like, this is you know I mean 
I think it's really good actually that you're doing that because people get to see somebody who's like a really incredible player trying to just take a shape that should that does relate to the changes and should work right and it's not working out the way you wanted it to i just imagine <laughs> bread at home like with the popcorn it's like oh boy it's gonna, <laughs> yeah, gonna <laughs> you know what i'm saying hey, i know it's gonna happen now <laughs> yeah it's so good but yeah mm -hmm. i mean what i'm realizing man like even even with pentatonic scales like with blue scales i have a lot of work to do because i haven't laid out things on the instrument in a way that lends itself to this kind of playing like right. even like picking a blues note and seeing it three notes per string or something. oh yeah right oh that's the yes that's not a part of the way i see like that, that like i play lines right I'm starting to see that everything you have to have a very large vocabulary of things spaced out in that way on the fretboard yeah and like a lot of things that are like just big gaping holes in my like like i'll get it together but like augmented scale like next i have next to zero shit in it like when i look i did too in the beginning of this stuff you know i had not I said when I started messing with this stuff, I had very little augmented scale in my playing. Then when I saw it was being a subset of a bunch of these scales, I investigated it more. Now it's like one of my favorite scales, you know. Now let me ask you this: You keep referring. I, I never read uh, just for the curious. Uh, I, I just I, I actually didn't even really know that that was a thing. Uh, and you say you you mention like the scales that are mentioned there. Um, what? How does that relate to the twenty two scales you're talking about? He doesn't. Yeah, I'm right. assuming he doesn't list the twenty two scales he's actually using in that book. No, he uses. Uh, so in the video, it's ten scales. Right? I remember the video. Yeah, that's what I. So in the book, all they did was they added five more scales to the. One of them was whole tone, two of them were, uh, one of them was the jazz major flat three flat six scale, one of them was the dominant one that we're going to talk about today, and then um, and then there was another one, I can't remember what it was at the moment, uh, okay. but I'm going to read a quote real quick, uh, sure. so because where he's talking about the names and all that stuff, uh, and just for the curious can't find it out, but what basically what he said, I just saw it a minute ago because um, I was looking for some quotes I wanted to read today. So basically what, what he said, though, uh, if I just paraphrase a little bit, was basically the scales in just for the curious, the names were as close that could that they could come up with um, for those particular group of notes, basically, right? Mm -hmm and uh but that his to him it was just a symbol right so he just had a symbol yeah i i mean i i totally am beginning to see why that would be good but yeah. at the same time i'm seeing that like if you actually make a chord progression and attempt to play over it certain realities are going to present themselves yeah, they do. Very in tune with those. Yeah. About like which, what is the group of notes that really asks to be resolved to? Uh, how yeah. are you going to work out this information in time to kind of, and, and it just the harmony will determine that. Like the harmony yeah. you come up with from this thing will, for a mysterious reason, like the progression I played, like the first chord is A minor major seven, but A's sound like dog shit on it you know it's just like right. you, you can use them in passing but you know yep. a big picture but you know, yep. that, that sound is real bad yep. um, so <laughs> it's uh yeah it's, it's just yeah, but what you said earlier was like really you hit it with the like harmonic minor thing for that particular progression being uh you know you start to find the like common tones. So there was like, so I think it's on, uh, so yes, yeah, so I was messing around with uh, like a C Lydian or no F Lydian to like uh, D 
flat leading or something, just a major third apart. And I was playing the jazz major flat three, flat six for each one, right? And then, but what you figure out is eventually you figure out that there's a subset scale in there that's common to both of those chords, right? Notes that are common uh, for both of those scales, rather. And it ends up being like a harmonic major with a sharp nine. So using, if you just use that scale, like it all sounds... On both of them. On both of them, it sounds good. I mean, it sounds, so you can like play your Lydian stuff or whatever on each one for a while. And then when you want something kind of uh, exotic sounding or out there sounding, you could just play that. Uh, it's like ended up being C harmonic major with the sharp nine. If I remember right. major with the sharp nine. Those were the common tones. Those are the common tones in the scale. Mm -hmm. So between the two. Mm -hmm. it, F harmonic major. F harmonic major. Oh, that was C. Yeah, C oh. major because it's coming from. Right. F C ends up being a subset of uh, the jazz major flat three flat six, really. But those same notes are in the A flat uh, jazz major flat three flat six too. I see. Yeah, because it's a four chord in that. Yeah. Like that E flat is, and then the other one is basically in C. Okay. Right. So if you wanted something that's kind of out sounding and you want to play those minor third half step shapes and, you know, you don't want to worry about like um, notes that are going to sound too out there or whatever, like that works pretty well over that, you know. I see. I see. Okay, let's, let's start digging in uh, to this next uh, episode in this ongoing nightmare that things that you'll yeah. never wake up from. Uh, Welcome to the club, man. <laughs> yeah. So you just like are get used to because I, I used to feel pretty good about myself. <laughs> like wake up in the morning. Yeah. I never had that problem. So <laughs> <laughs> what's that like? <laughs> It's awesome. Uh, you know, you just feel like you you feel like you uh, feel like, yeah, I know it. Music, you know. <laughs> uh, I never had that. Um, yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, yeah, it, it, it has its own, pro its own set of problems, but uh, yeah. Okay, so we're talking about, if I understand it correctly, the, like a G mixolydian, for instance, with an F sharp and a B flat. So like. Yeah, well, let's do in C because I wrote out all the examples in C. So. <laughs> okay, no problem. So, so, so an E flat and so a B flat to, to uh, or E flat and B to C mix of Lydian. E flat and B. Now, why would you do that if you spent all this time working? Wouldn't you want like to have everything sort of in one? I guess I guess it doesn't matter because you have to go through the options. But like the thing that my mind started spinning me towards immediately was like, why don't I just see it as a C major with a B flat and an F sharp, meaning like relating to that to where I can relate it to the thing I just learned. Oh right, yeah. Um, yeah. You yeah, can do okay. that. That's just an option. Okay, but let's, let, since you didn't see that, let's do it and see. I, it's not like I practiced it, so it's it's all the same. Yeah. <laughs> so we're talking about C mixolydian, yeah. where we're adding a B and an E flat. Okay. Part of the thing is there too. Like you've already added the E flat to with the jazz major one, so you're really just changing one note. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah, it's just no A flat instead. You have a B flat. B flat instead of A flat. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah that makes sense. I can live with that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. So, what happens now? Uh, <laughs> so subsets and everything, right? There's a couple yeah. quotes I want to read that I think might help. Um, 
with, you know, some of the questions you're having and some of the, uh, you know, cause I mean, you're where I was like, you know, a few years back or whatever, when I'm coming from a more traditional way of thinking and then I'm trying to make everything, uh, fit into my way of thinking rather than changing my way of thinking. Right. Which eventually I got kicked in the ball so much. I just had to change my way of thinking, you know? Yeah. So, but there's a few quotes, uh, that I think are pretty good. One from Wayne Krantz, right? Cause he talks about formula in his book where he logs like all 2048 scales, right? Yeah. Where he calls them formula. Um, but he said that it's a uh, formula suggests a blend, a concoction, something open-ended and without a tendency toward any particular order, though they are usually written stepwise from the root for convenience. Formulas are pure, untouched. They have no connotation, no melodic harmonic obligation. They rely on, rely on no particular groove, make no ethnic reference, have no stylistic allegiance. They have no history. They are abstractions until they are touched by the musician. In human hands, they become tonal filters through which musical energy can be channeled and subsequently shaped and shaded melodically and harmonically. The concept of formula unifies melody and harmony. A formula played one note at a time is melody. A formula played two note at a time is harmony. Right? So that kind of gets to the... Um... So when I read that, like, you know years back or whatever i was like oh you know i'm kind of thinking about this wrong you know mm -hmm. i need to look so at that, it. that really gives you that feeling like you know like like alan talks about and you talk about where you look down and all of the notes present themselves with no particular way and not, not asking to be played a certain way just kind of like there to where you can juggle the notes around yeah. would be nice yeah <laughs> i don't know if that's helpful to you at all or not no no i mean I, listen I, I i get i get that there's a moment that like a switch needs to come and you have to let go uh but i'm assuming that's after you can see some shit that i'm not seeing more consistently in more keys it's like i just don't have the you know like yeah, I just don't have that scaffolding yet to like have the whole thing stay up. Yeah, and I don't know if you're like still, you know, I mean, if you're working on like the Messian mode three and the D minor nine note scale <clears throat> that we did and everything, then I mean, that's a lot of I am stuff you're trying to deal with all at once, you know. I mean, the well, four you know, it's I have a lot of people, you know, enjoying seeing me fail, so it's <laughs> it's real fun. <laughs> Yeah, but I'm saying for you, that's a lot of things to be taking on. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, uh, so I didn't necessarily do it that way because I've discovered the scales more slowly, right? Mm -hmm. As I'm logging them and everything, uh, and I'm trying to figure out, you know, like I'd find, um, you know, like I'd find the same nine note scale you know, modes of it and stuff. And I'm playing through modes and I'm going, man, this sounds really familiar, but I kind of can't figure out like which one it is. And uh, I go, this got to be one of the, you know, after a while I figured out it had to be one of the four. I figured out there were only four and everything that I was finding um, had to be one of the four after I removed uh, anything with uh, four half steps or less. Right? Was it helpful in any way to visualize some of them even while you were doing it kind of wrong or doubling your efforts uh were you getting more used to like a certain bass note or tonal center being at the forefront like you were just talking about like playing d flat a flat flat six flat three over a d flat root over d flat lid yeah. right so it's like is there i'm assuming that there must have been like a relationship forming thing there too I mean, yeah, the first thing I started trying to do was like play it over so what, you know, or in questions <laughs> or something like that, right? So like so, the Dorian side of it, like applying yeah. it to like the two. Right. Yeah. And then I tried to do like, you know, uh, fit the stuff into two five ones and the same kind of stuff you're trying to do and all that. Um, 
then it got more where like so in this scale right you're going to see there's a lot of parallel voicings you can get right uh -huh. which i was talking about in one of the earlier videos but that particular scale didn't necessarily have a lot of those this one has a lot of a lot of that so you'll see like why i think rows of half steps right uh, well, not necessarily half steps but just you know uh just a particular grip that that stays in that scale. So it's all this parallel movement and it's stuff you see Alan do all the time, you know, um, or that you hear him do. Yeah. And uh, so after that, I was able to do what you just did. What was that? So that was like, uh, yeah. I see that I'll take your word for it. Yeah, there's a bunch of stuff like that in this scale. There is some half step stuff too, like, like that structure is in there. Yeah. Um, but so once I figured out like, oh hey, you know, mode three has like these three Lydian sharp eleven chords in it, you know, the first thing I tried to do with mode three. Uh, because Alan plays a lot of those types of chords. A lot of his tunes have that voicing, you know. So I'm like, I want to be able to use it over that chord quality. So uh, I would just loop like a major third, you know, uh, sharp 11 chords going in major thirds. And then I just mode three over it the whole time, you know. When you mode three over it and they're changing centers, does it like how important is the awareness of which one it's kind of like you know you're setting them up in time over yep. a groove right like, harmonic yep. rhythm yeah so it's like it matters which one it stops on they're not all equal right right yep uh so again it comes down to still having awareness of what chords playing behind you right and then being able to land on a note that sounds just, good. I mean, yeah, I feel like a lot of times now it's like it's so much CPU to just see the fingering and think about what I'm doing that like I have to yeah. sort of let go of that. Yeah. Uh, the more you get into these scales, you know, like mode three to me, I've played mode three so much, it's like my new major scale. You know? Yeah. yeah. And just like, uh, I mean, I see stuff in it all day long now, you know? so uh oh, i mean i see i see what you're saying though with like um this whole thing of kind of seeing the scale as just this big independent unit that's hovering there and yeah. just sort of walking it's so uh, you know ask not what the mystery can do for you ask what you can do for the mystery. <laughs> 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 So, uh, <laughs> that's funny. Oh, man. Anyway, so to get back to this scale. <clears throat> um, yeah, let's, let's study. Okay, so what, what's, what are the subsets? How do we start? So, yeah, so the subsets for this one are going to be uh, C mixolydian, obviously. Right. C major? Yep, C major. B e flat major. What, what major? E flat major. B e flat major. Why? Oh, so I have like a C Dorian? C Dorian. Okay. A C melodic minor in there. Okay. Uh, oh, yeah. And then, um, so then there's some more exotic uh, scales, right? So C dominant sharp nine, which is one of Allen's, that's Allen's scale. Number, shoot, you know what? I don't remember. This is from the. This one's in uh, curious. Just for the Curious. Yeah. And it's a uh, scale number. Here, I'll find it in two seconds. Uh, sharp nine. 14, scale 14. So he mentions that one specifically. Yeah. Is that, that's one of the ones they added? Basically? Yeah, it's one of the ones they added. 
Who are they? Who made this book? You know what? I think it's, uh, I think Don Mock might have had something to do with it. I don't know for sure, yeah. but uh, I know he like was like, like Alan wrote a book. It's no, I mean, it's just really the, uh, it's just the same stuff that's in the REH video uh, with a few added scales and just text um, instead of, you know, mm -hmm. seeing Alan talk about it. Okay. It's not All like right. super in depth or anything. They don't like, you know, really break the scales down much. Um, so, so that's basically Mixolydian with a sharp nine. Sure. Right. Let me fiddle. Okay. So you got those half steps. Okay. Uh, what do you like? Have you worked out? I'm assuming you've tried to work that work out like many fingerings and all that stuff for all these. I haven't messed with that scale a whole lot, actually. So really? that particular one, yeah, I did a little bit um, back like a few years ago or whatever. Like I was writing some etudes for Thomas, and uh, I think I used that scale in one of them. Actually, I used it in the book in an etude, one of the etudes in the book. Uh, because I think I tried to use like all 22 scales basically in one of the etudes, but, um, but I mean, some harmony that comes from there, you know, you get like a C7, obviously, uh, you can get like F over E flat, E flat yeah, over E. Yeah, E flat there, bright and clear, F over E flat. Yeah. Oh, you end up with like inversions of chords with some of this stuff, you know, so like when you were walking through this stuff, like on your porch, uh, and you came to the realization that, you know, naming some of this stuff was, you know, starting to be a pain in the ass. Well, right? Yeah, more and more trouble than it's and you get weird. Pain. Yeah, and you get weird things if you just walk diatonically, like, you know, if you're doing the major scale or whatever. If you do that with this scale, right, you're getting like, you know, this being one of the chords. And then this. Yeah, that, that's like which to me this is like a you know a rootless g7 13 flat nine right right it's kind of how i always see that it's a what it's like a 13 flat nine chord right okay 13 flat nine. usually i would put that with uh the dimension right right, right. um so you get that right and you get g minor or g minor seven sharp five F major seven, G minor seven, sharp five, A minor seven, and then a B flat major seven with a sus four. Yeah, I've, I've run across those a few times now. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm not gonna even try. <laughs> it's, it's so hard. It's so hard to see anytime there's anything new. Second degree is fully diminished? Uh, the second. Moving it wrong. No, that should be yeah, the, the half diminished, right? Should be that, right? Oh shit, I'm starting the wrong spot, sorry, my bad. How is that one? Wait a second, I have a D? Do I have an, I don't have an A flat anymore. Yeah, no A flat. This is just an inversion of a uh, dominant chord, right? Wait, but I have a D, an A, Oh, inside seven. Right, right. We're talking. We're talking about that C dominant sharp nine. Right. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I was. I was going back to the. Oh, okay. The yes. Scale. We're done with that thing. All right. No, no, uh, we're not. We're not. Okay. I, I'm just. I'm just confused. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, it's just hard, Brad. It's hard yeah. to be where we are. Um, yeah. You know, it's like I don't Still think you, I, th I think you've been through so much that you don't remember. Uh, the devastating feeling that you wake up I'm with. Still, I'm morning. still devastated. Trust oh, me. Yeah. <laughs> I'm still devastated. <laughs> what well, can we all just like you know get into like some I don't know like some shrapnel music again we're like we all know what's going on <laughs> know why we wake up in the morning 
Um, <laughs> yeah. All right. Cool. So that's another subset. Down yeah. to sharp nine. What else is in there? So we got uh, Ionian sharp nine also. Ionian sharp nine. Wait a second. That's a thing. Yeah. <laughs> Shit. One of the scales you find, it's like one of the, you know, what uh, Krantz calls nameless, faceless scales, right? So like that harmonic major with the sharp nine earlier, that's like a nameless, faceless scale. This is a nameless, faceless scale. Um, they're just so like any basically variation of like a mode that has two half steps in it, right? Like seven note scales that are like almost like a mode of something, but would have just uh, this well clock. technically like in the um in the phone book from hell there's seven note scales with four half steps in a row mm. you know what i mean so mm. you're really getting into some like super chromatic harmony yeah. you know no, we're, we're gonna have to limit it a little bit so, okay so so we uh, so okay so just to get it straight, we're talking about subsets. We said we have C major, uh, C mixolydian, C dorian, C melodic minor, C ionian sharp nine, C mixolydian sharp nine. Am I missing something? Uh, that's it for that. There's also uh, some really interesting um, pentatonic, one pentatonic, which is like an aug it's an augmented scale. Uh, B augmented with no fifth. So instead of no F sharp. So the notes would be B, D, E flat, right? G, B flat. Oh, no fifth. Okay. How would you ever see that? <laughs> okay, so it's kind of like, I see. So would you think about that? Do you have like a good shape for that? Or is, is it more like hovering around like an E? I mean, that's the one I do. So it's like... Like three, one, three, one, three. So it's a three, one, three, one, three. Mix fast. Um, and then a six note scale, B flat mode five. So you got a messian mode in here. What do we don't know in here? <laughs> what? <laughs> what, what, what is that? So what that is starting from the root would be, but if you start it from the seventh, from the major seventh, then it's like three notes in tritones. How do you determine that that's the first mode of it? Because I read Messian's book. Okay. <laughs> I see. Because he says so. I like yeah. it. All right. So, so I'm thinking about that as like root flat nine, four, sharp four, five, seven. Do you see Alan use that a lot? You know what? I haven't found him using this. I haven't found Alan using this one, uh, uh -huh. but he does do like there's a line. I almost I thought it was mode five where he goes. Uh, this isn't the exact line, but it's like, like that kind of thing. That's using all mode five. So there was a line I found where he did that, and uh, but he there was an extra note in there that ended up making it mode four. So it ended up being. I see mode. how that mode four is the one that's just like that, but four half steps. Right. This is a subset four. of mode four. I see. So it's just a it's a, a drop note of mode four. Okay. Scale. Yeah. Okay. All right. This yeah. Ah, 
I honestly do you like whenever we play a uh, like swing jeton like on that A flat seven inside that Lydian dominant shape I do play it. Like in gypsy jazz, like over like a dominant, like a Lydian dominant, sort of like from the flat seven to the root, and then from the third to the flat fifth. So I may be a, a genius. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this one has some cool voicings, man, too. Uh, that mode five, if you just think about the mode five part. I wish I had a time machine. I could go back to Berkeley with that. Yeah. <laughs> they would love me. <laughs> I bet some people in New York would pay a lot of money for that. Yeah, so. Uh, <laughs> That's fucking cool. thick. That is cool. Yeah, so it's, it's like cool. Stravinsky-ish or like Bartok or something. It's just like yeah. that, that vibe. Yeah, it's really cool stuff, man. Uh, that yeah. mode five. Anyway, that's in here. And then like, I don't want to listen to it, but I want people to hear it coming from me, if that makes sense. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> I want the impression it gives without having to sit through it. <laughs> oh, man. Just being honest, it's actually how I feel. <laughs> Uh, I love all those sounds, man. I'm looking yeah. for that like abstract shit, though. When I'm messing with all these scales, man, that's what I want, you know. That's yeah. What I'm trying to get is all that. I think shit. If my soul, not modern. I want to make great content. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I don't know. It's it's weird. I I just um, I feel like I just need I need to leave myself behind and let uh let these scales consume me so that that's the only uh, that that's that's might be ruining you man i don't know huh? that might be ruining you i don't know oh that, 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 that's that's okay you know <laughs> i mean i've trust me i've had uh i've had almost 40 years with myself and i you know <laughs> we didn't have much of a career so far so i <laughs> okay. so yeah we'll see uh, where it goes uh, anyway, so as far as subsets, uh, seven, six, five note scales, that's, those are the ones that I see. Okay, in. so to recap, that's the stuff, because we, ha we, we have to go through it and make content. So we have three major scales, we have a melodic minor, we yeah. have those two freak scales, the yeah. Ionian and dominant sharp nine, we have yeah. a pentatonic augmented, which is augmented without a fifth. Yeah. And we have that mode five. Five. Mode five. Okay. Starting on B flat. Yeah. Starting on the flat. B flat? Yep. Yeah. It. B flat. Yeah. Right. It's because we have that. Man, I'm so far from seeing it. I'm like <laughs> I'm, I'm, in, I'm in the darkness. So I, you know, you gotta, you gotta do that, this work. Right? Yeah, I mean, scratch. Yep. Yeah. Yep. I need to do it too. I need to do the work. So. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody I mean, needs I, to do the work. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I just hope it sticks. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. So same stuff, right? Like running the subsets, moving the shapes around. The shapes, like with this one, there's, uh, less of the minor third half step and the half step minor third thing and there's more of like whole step whole step and uh shapes like that you know yeah i could i could i could definitely see that so like if i just move let's just try to do this real quick um on one string so 
we said we add that we have this row of notes between like D and F and C and A, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's it? Yeah, that's it. Monk song. What is that song? Oh, that song. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh. Yeah. That that is that is that. Okay. But if I move a sequence, like a scale second and a scale third. A flat in there? Fuck, I did, didn't I? That was a <laughs> test. <laughs> Fuck up again? You fucked up. Shit. Hey, no F sharp, no. What, what don't I have? I don't have an F sharp, I don't have an A flat, and I don't have a D flat? Shit. Mm -hmm. Okay, I can do this, maybe. Ah. Wish you could do that, right? <laughs> yep, yeah, there you go, man. Um, oh, I've mastered it. <laughs> Okay. I mean, does there come a point where learning something new becomes easier? Uh, I mean, you know, I struggle with learning shit too, man. I have to read shit over and over and over and like look at things over and over because I have ADD. So I can read like a, you know, whole page. I'm a person with ADD write a 1200 page book over five years. Well, that's because people with ADHD have super focus on things they're interested in. That's why. Mm. What my therapist tells me anyway. <laughs> so. Okay. I mean, it sounds to me like you're just, you know, living in a world where most things are boring, <laughs> which I can relate to. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, most things are boring. Yep. Yeah. Um, <laughs> anyway, I don't know how I wrote it, to be honest with you, man. If I set out to write it, I wouldn't have been able to write it. That's not what I did. Of you course. Know? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's kind of evolved over time. Let me grab two notes at a time and see what happens. Just, uh, okay. So like if I have this. No E flat. Yeah, yeah. I think you fucked up. No, I didn't fuck up. <laughs> and I did it. I measured twice. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Cool. So yeah, man, um, there's some really cool structures in here. Yeah. See, now I can't see it. Hang on a minute. What was the... That kind of thing. Uh, you know. That's a crazy sound and voicing. Um, you know, that stuff sounds cool to me. I know to a lot of people, it probably doesn't. Uh, I know, I, I like it, with the, especially with the chorusing and the swelling. I was just yeah, like, so like this chord. It's like the mystery is speaking. This is like a D minor with a flat nine and then uh, E and eight. Wait a second. D minor? So like F, C, D, A. How 
are you voicing that? So it's F, C, D, A. Ah. Okay. Then E flat in the bass. Oh, nice. Then E on top of that. Yeah, that's how you make hits. <laughs> Uh, oh. Okay. I didn't get any music for that. <laughs> Let's see. So if I move that forward in the scale uh, and it goes to E, G, F, E, ah. Sick. Wait a second. The f How's that possible? That's not possible. I fucked up. Yeah. Oh, right. drop twos with weird bass notes yeah weird bass notes ah i love that nice okay Study with Brett Stein, all I got was tendonitis. <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay, sick. No, that's awesome. I'm, it's just, I'm still going to be slow, but I need to be like 10% faster to where it's like, you know, to, to where I can move them without thinking about every single note. Right. It's, it's a... Uh, yeah, brutal. Like, I uh, do see though that like once you have more of a handle on the subsets, on the drop scale notes, then putting together the big picture is easier because it's because it's like, you know, if you tell me to put this picture together from B flat major, C major, and G major, I could probably you know I could play the harmony from those right yeah three things in C melodic minor, but I'll yeah. miss a lot of shit in the middle. Right. right. So, but with this uh, uh, scale, the other really cool thing is like all the parallel voicings we were talking about, yeah. right? So you get like that. Like all that stuff, you know. I think I played a wrong note here, but so this one changes a little bit, but uh, so. to change you have to change this to an A. Yeah I got it. And it goes back to the major seven. E flat, same chord. see how you know a lot of that chordal stuff Alan does there's still it's not as non-functional as like people might think you know mm -hmm. yeah it's all just kind of from there or from all those things. yeah he modulates to other scales like he might not necessarily play that like that many 
of the same voicing moving through or whatever he'd modulate everything i've found like he modulates uh he'll stay in a scale for like um two or three chords voicings and then he'll modulate to another one two or three voicings then modulate to another one can you like give us an example that like from some from alan from an alan tune of something that he would solo over like just like four bars or eight bars of like some kind of changes from like a oh yeah like uh so tokyo dream is probably the simplest one uh -huh. uh let me just pull it up so i don't say a bunch of wrong shit yeah uh, hang on a second <sighs> beginning of uh tokyo dream is like d flat major nine sharp 11 right and so that's for two bars it goes to g69 for two bars then uh a flat major nine sharp 11 for two bars then it goes to g major nine sharp 11 Uh, if you do uh if you'd allow me to screen share i can show you the voicings on the screen oh yeah yep so let's see oh yeah right there all right oh one of those yeah your a section yep and then the b section is this chord Ooh. am i playing it right so i get six eight ten How he plays over uh, something like that. Yeah. At what point would you introduce, or would he introduce those nine note scales? Yeah. Well, we could go through this whole, uh, you know, breakdown of the solo if you wanted to. Um, maybe that's for later. But just. Uh, so what he does, this is the, the, what I've figured out from him is like the first chorus he pretty much sticks to the basic scales, like almost exclusively major, melodic, minor, diminished, whatever, no added notes, no nothing, just pure melody coming from scales, right? Then the second chorus of a thing, he'll start to introduce a few add notes here and there. And then by the third chorus, 
he's all out destroying, melting your face and making you wish you were never born. Ah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, that's pretty much how when I've analyzed. So when I analyzed uh, 0274, Tokyo Dream, 16 Minute Teen, uh, Texas, that was like the MO, man. Uh, it's, it's not so different than how people treat pedals. You know what I mean? Like they'll start off like with like a little bit of swelling, bending, overdrive. Second chorus, they'll open like a dirt, play some lines, then they'll like yeah. run like a wall. You know? Right. Yeah. It's like, it's like that that idea of like gradual building that follows a form. Right. It's not new, but it's, I guess it's like that idea of like adding harmonic and rhythmic density. Right. Yep. It's, it's just, exactly what he does, you know. And the solo builds the same thing rhythmically. Like rhythmically, he'll be very sparse in in the beginning. And then as the so by the end of the, you know, third chorus, man, he is just <laughs> yeah, letting it go. You know? Yeah. yeah. And, you know, and he'll do like in like the middle choruses, you know, like the second chorus or whatever. Uh he'll play some fast runs here and there with like melody and stuff still there, but then by the <laughs> by the next by the last chorus, man, he's just all out freaking killing you you know dude i just i don't it just occurred to me that like we had a like a handyman in the studio today because uh nick clogged up the sink shaving all his pubes um, <laughs> uh but but we were That's what happened yeah but but we were, we were uh he was like he had to tear the sink apart uh and like unclog it and while he was in there we were practicing the mystery and like he must think we're insane <laughs> <laughs> i just like because <coughs> sounds so crazy mm -hmm. to like yeah. the, the the normal i mean i tried playing some stuff for my wife like just to see like you know the i'm pretty sure with this kind of harmony even like alan's first chorus where he's sort of playing in so like you know the centers are so far that it sounds so out to people just like the beginning of the solo before he even starts yeah. adding those things like the harmonies themselves are they're they're consonant but they're islands right it's like they don't sound connected uh, yeah. in any way to people yeah. like i'm looking through that chart of like tokyo dreams just like you know that those sounds of like Voicing things normally, like going from here to there, it's almost like you can, uh, the point I'm trying to make is like you can play very melodically beautiful and inside on them. Right. And it's and still, that's still very out. Right. Strange you know? to most people. Right. Yeah. 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 I mean, uh, but in the way that like you would say, I guess the melodic part of Alan's playing when he's like playing inside. Have you had any insight about the kinds of things he's doing to kind of go from chord to chord? Because he's definitely not outlining harmony. Yeah, so he's, he's basically switches tone. scales. Yeah, there was common tone things, right? Like he'll hold a common tone over the bar line or whatever and to get into the next scale. Uh, Sometimes it's just, you know, I mean, he just goes to the next closest thing. Oh, I got to turn on my other tone. Hang on a minute. Um, so like, uh, oh, wait, I don't want that tone. All right. So like, uh, you know, if we just took like, you know, uh, scales moving in, major thirds or whatever uh so like c mate so like to me d minor so he'll do this kind of thing where um so i can play in these three keys and i'm only going to use this one shape right right that's the so now i'm in b flat minor 
into like uh, and then back you see what I'm saying so when he switches yeah. scales and stuff a lot he does that kind of thing right where you hear that kind of So it's like the same melodic contours inside. Contours and shapes area. and stuff. And yeah, and he's just going into it. So you know? the example you were just giving, uh, that was switching between. What do we do? Like. The Ionian box. Do what? So it would be like over what kind of chord? Like an F Lydian or something? Yeah, Lydian stuff. Then, uh, okay, I see. Like, check this out. Let's see if I can find this thing real quick. Uh, that's an interesting uh, approach, right? Mm. Like for, for changes that keep something to keep a shape going. So wait a minute. When he switched here, what? So it's kind of switching from like... Let's see if this is it. So this was like a thing I wrote for a student, um, a little etude thing that was demonstrating this kind of thing. So let's see. You want me to screen share? I'll screen share. Hang on. See if you can hear it. Where we, we do. Uh, so this is doing that kind of exactly that kind of thing on this. Um, here, hang on a minute. Of all the times I play 23 against six. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a bunch of string skipping. Hey, man, I saw, you know, I saw Alan uh, in 2012 here in Dallas. Uh -huh. uh, and that's, and I saw him do that shape that I'm doing right there. It was like a. Right? And I was like, man, what the hell is he doing? You know, because it was just this whole step, whole step shape, and he was skipping strings and just moving it. And uh what is that? <laughs> that thing? Like in uh uh in C major, it's just this. Yeah. Like that kind of thing, you know. Uh -huh. And then just moving it, you know. So, like in this scale that we just did, uh, in this jazz dominant scale, you get that shape. Yeah. So here, and then you get it here, all the way across in fourths. Doing that kind of oh. Oh. okay. I'm gonna have to work that out. Okay. Yeah. So it's like that kind of thing, you know. Rhythmically, but... how do you feel like that? That amount of notes in a beat. 
or on six beats how's that how's that compute well so like with this thing it's uh there's a sh this particular phrase that i was trying to fit in there right so i was just trying to fit the phrase and complete the phrase i wasn't necessarily I missing mean, oh, <laughs> like... yeah yeah so okay. You know, it's not like I'm just whipping out 2316 or whatever the fuck that was. Yeah, I was, I was reading that. I was like, I don't 23, know. 236. 23 yeah. over six. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. You know what I mean? I fit. Yeah. But sometimes it's just like trying to uh, fit a particular phrase in your head and hear it in a certain way. It's what I yeah. feel like Alan's doing sometimes when some of those rhythms are super crazy. Now, let me tell you this, because I have students, and uh, when you give a student something like that, what do you expect in return? Oh, they learn it. Like, really? Students learn that shit. Yeah, they can play it better than I can. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do you have, yeah. like, an army of, like, little Thomases that could just, like... <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, there's Thomas. It's like uh, an atonal hitman. It's like, hey, <laughs> <laughs> send one to... <laughs> Yeah. No, but I mean, you know, uh, I have some guys that are pretty, you know, advanced and they have chops and yeah. most of the people that are coming to me, like are wanting some sort of Holdsworth stuff at, these days. So, yeah. Cool. Well, I'm, I'm expecting that you should have a few more soon. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I've gotten a couple of people, uh, emails and stuff already. So yeah, it's, uh, well, you know, it's, uh, yeah, it's like drinking from a fire hydrant, that's for sure. Okay, I feel like we've done enough. We're going to have to translate that into uh, excruciating labor because, uh, you know, it's not your fault. The shit is like, you know, you, you say it, then you got to work it out and see what you see. Yeah. <sighs> yeah, I'm showing you the things I see, things I've found that help me make sense of it, you know. Yeah. All I can do. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Cool. Well, we'll attach um, like the subsets that you're sending over the PDFs and uh, the like little bit of the etudes and uh, yeah, try to get this together and we'll report back. All right, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much, Brad. Thanks. Appreciate it. We appreciate it. Thank you, sir.